we have the honor to have here with us Judge Van Johnson, the President for International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Welcome. Thank you. We would like to address you a few questions uh, today, if you may. Okay. Um, so my first question is, um, do you believe that this tribunal has enabled Rwandans to build a bridge between the ethnic disparity that largely perpetuated the genocide? I, I, I do believe that. Uh, first, I want to say that um, the intention of creating the tribunal was not that we uh, alone, so to say, uh, would, would solve the problems in Rwanda and, and, uh, uh, and, and create a situation where there were no longer um, <coughs> any tensions between the different groups. Uh, the intention was that we would contribute to the process of reconciliation, uh, which uh, implies that other partners will have to do their part, and, and that might be the, the, the larger part of, of it. And, and the Rwandan uh, government and the Rwandan people have, uh, have initiated uh, policies that break down the uh, um, uh, the uh, divide uh, between the different groups. Uh, in Rwanda, it's a, it's a criminal offense to refer to somebody's ethnicity now. It was actually also a division that was partly artificial because there's been a lot of intermarriage uh, between Hutus and, 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 and Tutsis in Rwanda. Uh, but when Rwanda was under uh, uh, Belgian uh, the tutorship, uh, the Belgians introduced identity cards where you had to indicate uh, your ethnicity. And that would also always uh, be the ethnicity of your father. Mm. Uh, so it's not a s sort of something that was built in, 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 uh, in, in, the, Rwandan, in the Rwandan culture. Another thing I, I, I want to mention is that the, the conflict in Rwanda was actually between three groups. Uh, one was the exiled Tutsis, which had fled the country uh, in, in connection with uh, a revolution in, in, in 59 when, when the Hutus overthrew uh, the, uh, the, the, the Tutsi-based uh, uh, monarchy. Um, and then the Hutus were divided in, in two groups. Uh, one group uh, uh, around the president, Javier Manas uh, party, uh, and then the opposition group. And, and for many years, from 73 to, to 1991, <clears throat> the president actually turned Rwanda into a, a one-party system, uh, like uh, we knew from, from Eastern Europe. Um, and when, when the cause of the genocide was, was actually that uh, the president's party sides could foresee that they would be toppled uh, once the uh, uh, Tutsis were allowed to return because then they would unite with the oppos Hutu opposition to what we call the ruling party. So they initiated a campaign vilifying uh, the, the Tutsis in order to split the opposition group. And, and in the genocide, we, we estimate that it was about maybe 10% of, of the Hutus that, that played uh, an active part. Mm. So it means that the last majority of the Hutus actually uh, played no active part in, in the genocide. So it, it, it wasn't Hutus against Tutsis, it was uh, uh, the radical Hutus against uh, a very large part of the Hutu population plus uh, plus the um, exiled uh, Tutsis that returned. Um, and, and we believe that an effective justice mechanism is, is a very, uh, is a very uh, important part in creating a stable society. And they do have a stable society in, in, in Rwanda today. There are some uh, hostilities going on in Eastern Congo uh, between the militias that fled to Eastern Congo and uh, between them and, and, and the local Hutu, Hutu groups, the Tutsi groups there. But inside the borders of, of, of Rwanda, 
the situation is, is very stable. Uh, Rwanda has sort of become the darling in Africa of, of foreign investors, and uh, it's, it's due to several factors. Uh, there's uh, hardly any corruption. Uh, their administration is, is very uh, high, uh, fine-tuned and, and, and very, very efficient. Uh, and they have a reliable um, uh, uh, judiciary, uh, legal system. So uh, foreign companies see less risk in investing there than elsewhere. Of course, we have nothing so to do with the corruption as such or or with the uh, administrative uh, procedures, but the rebuilding of the justice sectors, there we have played a, a very important part. So we are an element in, in the process that has led Rwanda to, uh, to where it is now. But of course, uh, sort of uh, the main credit goes to the Rwandans themselves. Mm -hmm. That's true. And uh, we uh, would like to know which are the unique findings of your investigations and which are the crimes that will be uh, convicted for the first time by an international tribunal. Yes, as, as I said in my, in my presentation at this conference, uh, the, the UN in 1993 for the first time established an international uh, criminal court, namely the ICTY covering uh, the, this conflict uh, in, in, uh, in relation to, uh, to, to the dissolution of, of Yugoslavia. And then the year, the year later, uh, the uh, conflict in Rwanda in 1994. <clears throat> and the conflict in, in the Balkans uh, was considered an international conflict, and uh, where genocide did happen in, in Srebrenica, but it was sort of a, a small part of the conflict, although in itself it, it, it was horrendous. Uh, so the ICTY has developed uh, the jurisprudence on war crimes in particular, <clears throat> and command responsibility and, and so on. Whereas the conflict in, in Rwanda was considered an internal a conflict between, between different uh, groups in Rwanda. So we at the ICTR has developed uh, the international criminal law and humanitarian law on internal conflicts. Uh, and in, in particular, we have uh, developed the law on, on genocide. Uh, the genocide during the Second World War was not technically a genocide because we, we didn't have any definition of, of genocide. It didn't happen until the, the Genocide Convention of 1948. And the ICTR was the first tribunal to actually uh, convict uh, someone for, for genocide, the crime of genocide, and define uh, the, um, uh, the convention of genocide. Uh, in addition, uh, the ICTR has developed, in particular, the law on, on on uh, gender-based violence, especially rapes against women, because it was a mass rape of Tutsi women was, was an integral part of the, of the genocidal campaign. And what we have done is uh, we, we have defined rape in the context of, of a conflict, a much wider uh, uh, definition that is, then is normally used in, in national law where it's sort of a technical description of what you do with certain, certain body parts. In an international uh, conflict, it's uh, any intrusion of a sexual art on, on another person under uh, coercive uh, circumstances. Uh, we have also uh, uh, established that rape uh, can be an element in committing genocide, war crimes, and uh, crimes against humanity. Uh, and finally, we have held leaders responsible for, uh, for rape committed uh, by other participants in what we call the, the Joint Criminal Enterprise uh, Genocidal Campaign. 
because they could foresee that this was uh, would be a consequence of of, of their uh, criminal uh, joint enterprise. Um, I would say that is our major findings, and then another element in in uh, the situation in in, in Rwanda was that. Uh, the public media was used as a tool to incite uh, the Hutu population to, to participate in, in the genocide. There was a private uh, radio channel called Radio Milkalin, uh, which uh, issued very uh, inciting statements continuously uh, through a very long period. Uh, so we also sort of developed uh, the responsibility of the media in relation to inciting to crimes. Um, and then, of course, we, we were the first uh, tribunal since Nuremberg and Tokyo who uh, convicted a uh, head of government. Uh, but that would happen eventually. <laughs> And um, you elaborated um, a manual where you, all the information is disseminated. Um, how do you plan, uh, or and how do you plan to um, uh, further extend uh, that uh, knowledge mm. of your findings through the manual? Yeah, we 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 have a quite an extensive uh, program uh, which uh, aims at um, at empowering national jurisdictions. Uh, to, to prosecute international crimes uh, because uh, international prosecution is, is going to, to be the, the exception. It, it, it's far too expensive and uh, it, it doesn't give the concerned countries and, and victims and survivors this sense of ownership to the process when, when the process takes place far away from uh, where, where the crimes happened and, and uh, where the actors, judges, prosecutors and so on are from other countries and, and so forth. So for, for a lot of good reasons uh, in the future, uh, also the prosecution of international crimes uh, will be uh, primarily the responsibility of, of, of national courts. And what we have uh, tried to uh, do is to um, empower national jurisdictions and prosecutions uh, to, uh, to to handle these cases, and, and uh, we have done it in, in two ways. The, uh, uh, one way is, is uh, sort of training seminars, where we have tr trained the judicial professionals, especially in in, in Eastern Africa, Rwanda, uh, Tanzania, uh, <coughs> Zambia, Kenya, uh, and Uganda. Um, and then also by issuing uh, best practices manuals, uh, one about uh, how to, uh, to prosecute uh, sexual and, and gender-based uh, crimes, another one about uh, tracking and arresting uh, international fugitives, uh, and a um, uh, third one uh, is about the transfer of cases from international courts to uh, to, uh, to national courts. Um, it's all available on on our on our web page. Uh, so it's what not would that web page uh, be for the audience? Maybe that would be important. Well, we we have a, a web page which is called uh, unictr.org. Uh, org. Um, with a lot of information about the tribunal and also uh, a small movie that actually uh, shows um, in a very brief format uh, the, uh, what happened in Rwanda <coughs> during the genocide. Uh, we are preparing uh, another film uh, where all the actors that uh, participated at the tribunal will be interviewed and, and uh, uh, sort of explain the difficulties we met. Uh, you know, the, when the tribunal started, there was no template for how to run an international tribunal, criminal tribunal. We were more than 110 different nationalities, came from different parts of the world, different legal systems and so on. It's almost like building the Babel Tower, <coughs> as, as they uh, didn't succeed to do in the Bible. Uh, but we had to, to build up uh, uh, 
an in international court and, and in the beginning there was a lot of problems uh, but we managed to get a, a actually a very fine-tuned and, and, and highly e effective system um, so of course we we have <coughs> advised other uh, jurisdictions uh, how to build up special uh, divisions to to deal with international crimes but we have also advised and trained uh, the regional courts that are not dealing with criminal cases how to run an international court because many of the problems uh, are the same uh, irrespective of whether you're dealing with criminal cases or human rights or, or, or civil cases so we have uh, been training uh, the staff and the judges of the African Court of Human and People's Rights uh, the staff of the West African ECOVAS Court uh, and also uh, the Caribbean Court of Justice, where my predecessor happens to be the president. That's why we have a, <coughs> a connection that far away. Well, there is so much information that we are looking forward to find uh, out uh, from uh, the web page, and we are going to uh, look more into it. Uh, thank you very much for being mm. here with us today. We are very fortunate to have you, especially that on Monday you are going to present the uh, and you are going to conclude uh, your activity with the, uh, with this case. Yeah, and on, on, uh, on Monday our last appeal judgment will be delivered in Arusha, Tanzania, and, and that uh, concludes uh, 21 years of operation so well thank you very much a, a and uh, we are uh, and good luck and congratulations <laughs> for the hard work uh, first yeah. of all good luck on the thank findings. you and, and thank you for and coming and, and thank you for having me giving us I words of wisdom <laughs> yeah okay thank you